He said that God has shared your account. He has put a deposit into your account, which is Jesus on the cross, which is what was paid for. But now we need to every day add to that account those things. How do you do that? Well, you get in the Word of God. You, you, you think about the Word of God. You step out by faith and say, I'm not going to live by fear. I'm going to buy four chickens and they're going to live. They're going to get loose in my yard and they're going to live. I plead the blood of Jesus that the varmints will stay away. I know that that sounds funny, but take that into the most simplest form and apply that to your life. When you're a child, you know, we, we can pray for safe travel for you guys. Absolutely are. But you know what? The blood of Jesus has gone before you. We believe for that. We step out and stand on the word of God. Because here's the deal. If you get in too much of the works part, you'll get into fear. Because you'll go, oh, we didn't pray. We forgot to lay hands on the plane before we went to Mexico. We forgot to. We forgot my kid just went off to college and I forgot to pray for their travel all the way there. And if you get over into works... What's happening is that fear will deplete your account too. So you've got to stay in faith that says, my God has supplied. My God does make a way where there seems to be no way. My God has gone before me. Amen. Amen? But even in saying that, back to my friend, this is why are all these horrible things happening? We need a life of Jesus. We need to make sure there's no holes in the coop. We need to make sure that that door is shut. We need to make sure that we've done all we know to do. And doesn't the word say, after having done all to stand, you stand. Do you remember that? Taking up that shield of faith. And, and so it says, after you've done all you know to do, all you know to do to stand, he then says, stand therefore. And you stand. But if you take that word stand, it also means that you're on guard. You're ready. You're looking around. You're making sure, not ADD looking around. You're looking around, looking for, to say, hey, praise the Lord. I got this shield of faith here. I'm going to make sure the enemy doesn't shoot a fiery dart at me. I'm going to make sure that the enemy doesn't try and get me here. Because he will do it when you're least expecting it. Those varmints will try and get into the hen house in the middle of the night. When I'm sleeping, they're going to try and get up. But praise God, I've done due diligence. Praise God, I've made sure the hen house is safe. Praise the Lord. I've, I haven't prayed for my chickens, for sure. And so I believe in God for great things. Now I have to release it by faith. I have to release that by faith. I got a call from Carly last night, and she was just kind of having a frustrating moment. Well, she was, she's like eight hours away on a quad camping somewhere, and just she was just having a, 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 a bothersome moment. And so as her dad, I'm, you know, I, I can, the phone's kind of cutting in and out. And we just had to plead the blood of Jesus and say, baby, you're taken care of. You're safe. You're, you're going to be just fine. And I had to release that to the Lord. Because in my mind, I'm going, well, I, I could get in my car and I could drive there. And I can't drive there. And they're out on a quad somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And so sometimes when your circumstances come, you've got to release them to the Lord. And say, Lord, I've got to give the whole of this care. Casting all of your care on the Lord. Because he cares for you watchfully. So there's no distance in the spirit. When you plead the blood of Christ, when you stand on the word of God and speak that out with your mouth. When I said to her, I said, I've prayed for your situation. And you know what? I hung up the phone and I got back to my coffee. There was every invasive thought you could think about. There was every situation you could think of. It was just going through my mind like a train. Just... And I'm thinking, and you know what? I'm not. I was in the middle of working on sermon. In the middle of just getting these scriptures, digesting them. And isn't that just like the enemy to see just how... Yeah, maybe we would just get that hen house door just open just a little bit. Maybe we just invade your head with fear for the next two hours, and you'll be no good tomorrow. And so instead, you just let that train keep going. Just let that train keep going. Remember, you don't have to let those thoughts build a wall in your mind. You don't have to let those thoughts build a nest in your hair. They're going to go, and they're going to come, and they're going to go. All of those things. Fear will not let up in your life. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. In a world that we live in right now, until Jesus comes back, the bottom line is Jesus came to redeem mankind and to set them free, but the bottom line is this, this world is in trouble without Jesus. And so fear and all of the motivation and all of the stuff that's going on, the world is going to feed off that, feed off that, feed off that, and you're going to see people that have got more fear, more anxiety, more situations. And if we thought our situations were tough, it's going to be some tough situations for people. But God has not given us that spirit of fear. Do not allow that access point to come in. Now, um, I want us to go, if you would, 
to Colossians. Go with me to Colossians 1 verse 12. Colossians 1 verse 12. By the way, if you wanted to know, we were supposed to be in Mark 4, talking about little ships. But God had other plans. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Now, if you're in Christ, this is what you should do. Remember we said last week, faith's not pretty. Faith steps out, faith meets that fear head on. In verse 12 it says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Who has qualified us. You ever sat with somebody and they say, Well, I'm just no good. Nothing good ever comes from my family. I just, I've not, not been a Christian long enough and I've got all these shortcomings and I've got all of this. Your mind ought to immediately go to a scripture like this and say, Wait a minute here, the word says you are qualified. When you come before the Lord in prayer, Maybe you say, but Pastor, I've left the trap door open. <laughs> Pastor, I opened the door and, and I, I, I was allowing access to the enemy into my life and it's been, been wrong and a mess. And yeah, it may have been wrong and it may have been a mess, but the Word says that He is faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness. So you need to attack that. You need to say, Lord, I plead the blood right now over my situation. You need to change that behavior. Don't just live with that and say, well, I do whatever I want. That's not what we're saying here. He's qualified you, but He also qualified you to ask forgiveness. He also qualified you to speak out the word over your life or your situation, begin to take authority over that and say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to step out and I'm going to act as God would call me to act. Amen? So notice it says here, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers. The enemy will really work on your qualifications and say, are you qualified? Because I know what you did yesterday and I know what you did the day before. You need to be able to respond and say, I've plead the blood. I've been before the Lord, and you leave it at that. You don't even talk to the enemy. Don't strike up a conversation. You are qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance in the saints in the light. The light of the Word of God. If the Word of God has shown you a certain thing, it says, I don't appreciate you talking that way, or I don't appreciate you uh, living that way, or I don't appreciate you acting that way, you need to begin to say, wait a minute here. Am I doing some things here? God may have qualified me. He may have qualified me in the spirit, but we're not seeing it in the flesh. And so as you go before the Lord and begin to get those things made right in your life, then you need to stand on that. You need to begin to say, that stuff is in the sea of forgetfulness. I'm moving forward into what God has for me. But the enemy will still work on your qualifications. But you are qualified. Then it notice it says here, in the light of the word. You need to get in the light of the word. You've got to have that scripture because the enemy is going to be persistent. He's going to find things because no matter how hard I worked to make sure that hen house was safe, he was persistent. Every day, I have to admit, I, I do not go and check now, but I did for two days to go and check to make sure they're all still alive. And you say, Pastor, maybe that's just what you should do. Okay, but fear motivated that, right? It's no different than letting your child drive to Toronto on their own. You could follow them to Toronto or you can believe the Holy Spirit's with them. You've got to begin to look at your motivation there. You've got to begin to look and say, is this fear building or faith building? And, and, and it, it can be as simple as a chicken or as simple as my daughter six hours away in the middle of nowhere or whatever circumstance comes at you, you've got to begin to say, am I going to react in faith or am I going to re react in fear? So then it says here, he has delivered us. That word has is also with the Greek word authority. He has delivered us from the power or authority of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He has delivered you from that spirit of darkness. You guys remember, I've told you many times, what's my most favorite thing to do in a grocery store? As a kid, not now. I try it sometimes. Burn your elbow. You ever try and stop the conveyor belt? Oh. Nobody? I used to do that all the time, see if I could stop and frustrate the teller. But I could never stop it. I would burn my elbow. The point is this, the conveyor really couldn't be stopped. You have been conveyed into the kingdom of God. You cannot stop what God has provided for you. You cannot stop the things that God has set in the heavenlies for you. Whatever it is that you need, you have been conveyed by Christ, through Christ, into. Think about that. So if it's healing, redemption, salvation, wholeness, 
happiness, joy, amended marriage, amended fearful situation. Anything that you can name of, you can say, God has conveyed me into that. So the good outcome is for you. It's not for Jesus. Right? We pray sometimes for Jesus' sake. Jesus doesn't need the healing. He's healed. Right? He says, use my name and speak it out. Use my name and come after things. Use my name and see them corrected. And so it says here, he's translated us from the power or authority of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Notice it said that we have been conveyed and the power and authority of darkness. We know that at the cross that was taken care of. Death, hell, and the grave. Fear was taken care of. There is no authority. As I said earlier, if I stood in the middle of the street, they're not going to listen to me. They're going to go as a guy in a suit out there standing in the middle of the street. The enemy is trying to make out like he has authority. But you only can give him authority. It's suggested. He can suggest that you fear. He can suggest that you stay awake all night and worry about your chickens. He can suggest that you stay awake all night and worry about your kid. He can suggest lots of things. But you can begin to say, wait a minute here. I am not falling into that. 